Let's talk. We're living in the last days, and those of us that are believers, we're looking forward to the second coming of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. But in the meantime, Jesus said there would be tribulation, which means terrible stuff, would be happening, and there would be persecution in this world, and and that's going on. All over this world, that's going on. Everywhere that's going on, even in the United States and in Canada, that is going on right now. So Satan is in control. So in the meantime, what is it that you're going to do? You can, you can join the crowd. You can go ahead and just say, forget it. I'm just going to go ahead and be like them. You can say, like in Isaiah's t- time, uh, let's eat, drink, and be merry uh, because tomorrow uh, may never come. Uh, these things are going to happen, so let's have a party right now and let's get the most out of it. You you can do like that and be hedonistic like everybody else, or you can be nihilistic and say, I don't matter. There's no purpose in my life. But Jesus, in talking about our prayer life in the Sermon on the Mount, says something that is, is very, very interesting. Jesus says, don't be like everybody else. Don't pattern your life like everybody else. You're different. You be uh, like you, like your father wants you to be. Because he said, your father knows what things you need before you ask him. So Jesus is reminding us that the father knows the very details of life right now. Our heavenly father, understands our struggles. God knows who you are. Jesus said, God knows where uh, you live. Jesus said, God knows uh, when, when you're going to die. God knows the hairs on your head. Jesus says all of that. So God has a plan for your life. And and th- this is a word that some people use and very frivolously, and it's a word called destiny. You'll hear that a whole lot in Hindu circles. You'll hear that a lot in Muslim circles. You don't hear that much in Christian circles, but every once in a while, somebody will talk about a destiny. Well, our destiny is God's plan for our life. Jesus said, God knows what you need before you ever ask. So God has a plan for your life. And by the way, God has a page for your life. By that, the Bible says that he has tattooed you on the palm of his hands. So God knows everything. He knows who you are, where you live, what you need. So he wants to take your hand and and write, he wants to take your hand, your heart, and write his heart, his hand, his love, his personality, upon you. He has implanted that into your DNA, so to speak. But in the meantime, because of sin, that has been kind of uh, taken away from us. And so he wants to reinstitute that in your heart, in your life, to make you like Jesus. We call that godly, godliness. Therefore, don't be like the hypocrites who loved, uh, and Jesus was talking about praying long prayers and eloquent prayers, don't be like this bunch that's always trying to impress others because God is always impressed by you. Uh, I was talking to some folks. They were telling me not long ago about this famous uh, musician and uh, singer who said, I was a dork in high school. Nobody liked me and, and nobody cared about me. Well, that's probably true for most of our lives. Uh, most most of us have something wrong with us, and we're not one of the cool kids. And even if we are one of the cool kids, there's always somebody that we're trying to impress. So you can't, can't make your life about impressing others because Jesus says God is already impressed by you. God knows you from the beginning. God knew you before the foundation of the earth. God made you, God, God uh, formed you, and so God knows and so knows about you. So from God's mouth to your heart, you come before Jesus Christ. And Jesus says, when you pray, 
Just be honest. Quit playing these games. Go ahead and say right now, be honest, God, I have blown it. The Apostle John says that if we say we are, we have no sin, we are, uh, we're out of it. If we say we have no sin, we're a liar and the truth is not in us. Jesus Christ is truth. Is truth. So right now, Jesus says, just be honest with God. And by the way, you can't fool God. So when you're honest with God, literally what you're doing is you're just being honest with yourself also. Going ahead and saying, you know, the game's up and I can't do this any longer. God, you're, you're, you're going to have, to have to help me. So God wants you to ask him. He wants you to pray to him. He wants you to talk to him. He wants you to remember who he is, but you, he wants you to remember that he exists and that he is a rewarder of those, the Bible says, who seek him. You will, if you seek God with all your heart, you will discover how to get in touch with him. You won't find him because he's not lost. God is never lost. God knows exactly who he is and where he is. You may have forgotten him. You may have turned your back on him, but he knows where you are. So God was going to give you truth. God is going to give you life, and Jesus will be your all in all. Now, you know, I don't, I don't know, but I think it's, I think it's time for us to start, uh, quit reading the Bible and talking about things and just start, start praying. You, you don't need a lot of words when you pray. Uh, just say, uh, Jesus said, start off by our Father who art in heaven, dad, dad, you're, you're, you're in control. You're, you're sovereign. Just start talking and rehearsing who God is. You, you don't have to tell God who he is. You don't have to impress him. He's already impressed him. But you say those things to remind you because when you start confessing that God is God and the Bible is the word of truth and Jesus is the son of God and you are saved and you know Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, and, and Jesus sits upon the throne of heaven, and God is sovereign, and he, he, he is a ruler of the world, and he knows who you are. When you start confessing things like that, then that gets into your heart, that gets into your life, and that changes how you look at life. So God knows who you are, and God knows how you feel. And God knows right now that most of us are very confused when we pick up the paper and we, 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 we read the paper. Well, I don't know if anybody reads the paper any, anymore, but, but you, you get on the Internet or you, or you sit down and watch the news. And I don't know many people even watch the news anymore. Uh, most, most of us, the only reason we watch the news is to see what the weather's going to be. So Jesus is aware, now listen to this, of all your hopes and all your dreams and all your tears, and all your sweat, and all your disappointments, and Jesus knows about your caring heart, and so Jesus wants you to pray so that you will find comfort. Jesus might not change the situation. You will find comfort. So right now, let's pray. Father God, God of the universe, thank you so much. Let's just Thank God, thank you for the assurance that you know our need even before we bring them to you in prayer. Thank you, thank you for knowing us from the foundation of the earth. And thank you, God, thank you for knowing us after the earth is no more, never forgetting us. And help us right now, God, help us right now to approach you with faith and respect and full of confidence and thus knowing that you are involved with every second of our life. And God, give us faith to believe you and that you really, really do care about us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.